The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. At that time, seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Like I said at the beginning, we have decided to celebrate this mass as votive mass for peace, for justice and peace in our country and in the world. And we are celebrating this mass, marking the 16th anniversary of that terrible bombing in central London on the 7th of July, 2005, in which several people were killed. It was a coordinated bombing attack in two train stations, two under, um, underground trains, and one bus, double-decker bus, in which we lost one of our own, a Nigerian, a boy that I knew very well, who was my little friend, Anthony Patai Williams. And thinking about that horrible event 16 years ago, at which time we in this part of the world did not know much about terrorist bombing. Then came 2009 and Boko Haram started. And from 2010, we began to have our own dose of terrorist bombing. And in these 16 years, unfortunately, we have now had numerous bomb attacks that have taken the lives of thousands of people. And we have progressed from there, is it regressed, not progressed, from there to a situation where we have Boko Haram, we have Iswap, we have bandits, ravaging bandits all over the country, not just in the Northwest, killing and maiming and destroying, leaving an orgy of blood.
Many Nigerians are traumatized. Right now, as we speak, there's a discussion. Is it 121 or 131, the number of students of Bethel Baptist School in Kaduna kidnapped on Sunday? Those that were kidnapped from the Islamia School in Niger State six or seven weeks ago have not been released. There are still Chibok girls that are in captivity. So we have students of several schools. Some of them are not even, don't make news anymore. We have students of several institutions, including universities, kidnapped. We have been in trouble. And our trouble does not seem to be abating As in the southeast, we have seen the anger of young people who feel deprived, who feel marginalized, and have joined extremists and are bombing and killing and maiming in the east. Then in the west, and then we have seen our law enforcement agents engage in what qualifies to be called banditry. The manner in which the invasion of uh, the Igboho's uh, residence in the middle of the night, 1 a.m. a few days ago or last week, is not befitting of any democratic society. Because he was not, we have lawyers here, he was not in the middle of a crime. He was not committing a crime at that moment. And to invade his home in that manner is a very shameful thing for a country that claims to be democratic. And so there is anger in the land. Anger on account of injustice. The injustice in government appointments, the injustice in the siting of projects. There is a lot of anger in the land right now. Making the search for peace more far-fetched. Making the realization of peace in our country more difficult. Because while some of us, as many of you know here, Luke's Terror has been engaged in all kinds of initiatives, including the Network and Advocacy Project that is struggling to bring Nigerians together to speak one language, to speak with one voice, to achieve a measure of consensus on a number of national issues so as to promote peace, while Luke's Terror and many other agencies in the country are trying their best to bring the country together, we have leaders that seem determined to sink the ship of state. Determined to sink the ship of state, to destroy us further. Under these circumstances, as I listened to the chairman of Khan, Kaduna State, this morning on TV, speaking from a disposition of helplessness, under these circumstances, that saying, with which Nigerians do say with, um, as a joke, God day, na poor man prayer. I take it upon myself. If we are so helpless, then we know that our God is on our, our side. We serve a God who is friend of the poor, defender of the widow, father of orphans. We have been rendered widows in this country. And so we call on God who is the defender of the widow to defend us. We have been rendered orphans in this country with no father, with no leader, with no one to take care of us. So we call on God who is father of orphans to be our father and defend us. We have been oppressed and abused in multiple ways, at multiple times. So we call on God, who is the friend of the poor, to defend us. And may he hear our prayer. I would read a couple of poems 
from my poetry book, Flames of Truth. The first one is, Calm the storm. Lord, calm the storm. We have battled all the while against the stormy sea and the violent wind with the treacherous waves breaking into our frail boat and threatening violence and death. We are all adrift at sea and are paralyzed with fear as chaos and disaster stare us in the face. Abandoned to our own resources, we are powerless and helpless before the storm and are face to face with the futility of our ability. Walk over the waters, Lord. Calm the violent storm and transform our fretful circumstances into a theophany, an epiphany, that like Moses in the desert, we may recognize your voice of assurance in the blazing fire that surrounds us like a rampant and heal our collective fear of storms and tornadoes and earthquakes and wildfires. Walk over the waters, Lord. March firm on the turbulence and let the stormy sea of disorder and chaos be a place of providential encounter with the one who calms the storm and steals the sea. Let the turbulent waters of armed robbery, of banditry and kidnapping be the divine milieu for a privileged revelation of the one who commands the troubled waters and walks tall over the abyss of death. Walk over the waters, Lord. Rebuke the wind and let the tempestuous waves of trials and tribulations against which our frail boat must battle today be the harbinger of the incarnate one who conquers evil by his majestic presence. Amen. The next poem I like to read is titled, Come Down, Lord. Come down, Lord. Tear the heavens open, Lord, and come down, for my people have all run mad. The young and the old alike. There is no one who is sane. They are all crazy. They are killing each other and roasting the bodies of one another. They are about to eat each other's flesh. Oh, can't you see? Don't you care? Come down quickly, Lord, and don't delay. Intervene once again in our national affairs and save us from chaos, anarchy, and doom. Rent the heavens open and come down from your exalted place, for these are turbulent times in our climes. You know, Lord, that my generation has to contend with an aberrant order where hell is constantly let loose in hired assassinations, armed robbery, banditry, religious bigotry, and street torgery. Can't you see? Don't you care? Come down quickly, Lord, and don't delay. Intervene once again in our national affairs and deliver us from our corporate insanity. Tear the heavens open, Lord, and come down from your holy place. Dislodge the regime of violence. Dislodge the regime of injustice. And let justice reign in the land. Rent the he heavens open and come down from on high that the winds of justice and righteousness may blow from Sokoto to Kano, and that the waters of justice may flow from Lagos to Calabar. Visit this land, Lord, 
that right may dwell on the higher lands of Jos and Yola, and that equity may flourish in the creeks of Wari and Yenogoa. Come down with your ladder of compassion and restore your beautiful creation that truth and justice may reign on the rocks of Abuja and Abeokuta, and that love and compassion may grow on the hills of Enugu and Ibadan, that peace may flourish on the plains of Makadi and Kaduna, and that security may abide in the forest regions of Abakaliki and Benin City. Tear the heavens open, Lord, and come down with power to intervene in our national affairs. Enter into our boat and calm the storm. Rebuke the wild wind of death and let there be life once again. Chase out the demons of violence and crime and let your peace and security reign in our land. Remove the blinders from our eyes and deliver us from the darkness that leads to destruction. Rent the heavens open and come down in glory to intervene in our national affairs. Teach my people the dynamics of peace and show us the civilization of love. Impress upon our hearts that we cannot harvest a rose flower by planting a noxious weed and that we cannot have peace while harboring hate in our hearts. Make us understand that darkness cannot drive away darkness just as hate cannot drive away hate. That returning violence for violence only multiplies violence, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Tear the heavens open and come down with the cherubs to intervene in our national affairs. Look upon us with favor that we may have the generosity of heart to offer and to receive forgiveness for past hurts and wounds. Grant us the generosity of heart that we may let go of anger and resentment over the injustices of succeeding generations. That we may let go of the anger and bitterness over the atrocities of the civil war of 1967-70 to and the gross violation of human rights during the demonic dispensation of barbaric leaders, dead and alive. Rent the heavens open and come down with seraphs to intervene in our national affairs. Teach us to forgive and to forget. For a world without forgiveness is a cold world of endless strife. So as we celebrate today as a day of peace, as we celebrate a votive mass for peace, assure us of rejuvenation. Let us witness a new dawn in our individual lives and in our country. Amen. Next, I will read the poem, Gentle Revolutionaries. They are all from Flames of Truth, published in 2006. Francis of Assisi, Damien de Lepa, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Oscar Romero, Helda Camara, Mother Teresa, John Paul II, gentle revolutionaries, radical disciples, champions of nonviolent resistance, bearers of the civilization of love, and heralds of God's kingdom of peace. These are the best hearts. These are the brightest stars. These are the finest flowers that humanity has bettered. Models of a new world of harmony. Exemplars of a future world of solidarity. And prototypes of the promised world of tranquility. Their tribe shall overthrow and consign to the trash can of history the Herods and the Nerus, the madmen and the hangmen, the lepers political and the criminals incredible. Their legacy shall survive forever 
and dislodge permanently the thorns and the tistles, the prickles and the brambles of degenerate humanity. Amen. Finally, I will read a poem titled Like St. Francis. As you know, St. Francis is our great apostle of peace, promoter of peace, and all kinds of projects we have in our church promoting peace we name after St. Francis. St. Francis of Assisi, the 13th century monk who started the Franciscan Society. His devotion to peace, his commitment to peace is well acclaimed beyond the Christian church across the world. So I'd like to pray, Lord, I desire peace like St. Francis, that little saint of Assisi who lived the gospel of peace to the full and brought together men and women of disparate creeds and colors to the warm embrace of the father of all. So make me an instrument of your peace that I may bring the peace born of unity where there is the crisis of division. Amen. Lord, I desire love like St. Francis, the diminutive angel of Assisi, whose silent message of truth reached the ends of the earth and softened the hardened hearts of the blind warriors who call themselves crusaders and jihadists. So make me a channel of peace, of love, O oh Lord, that I may proclaim your love where there is hatred and announce your pardon where there is injury. Amen. Lord, I desire faith like St. Francis, that celebrated apostle of Assisi who held on to your promise through thick and thin and never gave up on your covenant. So make me a model of faithful discipleship that I may live the gospel with, without compromise and witness to your truth in season and out of season, welcome or unwelcome. Lord, I desire light like St. Francis, that blessed touch bearer of Assisi, who waded through the storms and the wild winds of his day and never surrendered to the light of discontent. So make me a beacon of your light, that wherever there is the darkness of doubt and fear, I may ignite the fire of faith and fortitude. And wherever there is the midnight of distress and despair, I may summon the dawn of hope and trust. We make it this prayer through Christ our Lord. Let's rise. Let us now turn to God and pray. We have affirmed our faith in the God who is the Prince of Peace. We have affirmed our faith in the God who is the father of orphans, who is the defender of the widow, who is the friend of the poor. And so those of us who are suffering direct victims of the challenges of today, of the violence of today, and indirect victims like the rest of us, those who are traumatized, who are in psychological and emotional distress on account of the devastation of our motherland, let us turn to the Lord and pray. Believing that he is hearing us, and as St. Paul says, that he is able to turn even the worst circumstances unto good, let us call on him to turn our terrible circumstances of today unto good to the glory of his name. Lord, Your son came into the world, took flesh and came into the world that the children of men may become children of God. 
that we may be agents and promoters of peace. And he says to us, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. The peace the world cannot give is my gift to you. And so, we want that peace today. We want our country to have that peace. We want our homes to have that peace. We want the hearts of our brothers and sisters, Christian and Muslim, Northerners and Southerners, to have that peace so that our society may dwell in peace. We pray, O oh Lord. Let us pray for Anthony Fatai Williams, who died in a bomb blast 16 years ago, and all those who have died on account of insurgency, on account of banditry, kidnapping, criminality across our land in the last 16 years. Especially in the last 12 years of Boko Haram. Lord, receive them in your kingdom and grant them the joy of your presence. Those who have been maimed, those who have lost parts of their body on account of this violence, those who have suffered incredible psychological trauma, emotional distress, those who are yet to recover from this trauma, let us pray for their healing, that the good Lord, who is the real healer, will bring them healing. We pray, O oh Lord. Let us pray for the remaining, for Leah Sharibu, the remaining Chibok girls, the students of the Islamia school, the students of the Bethel uh, Baptist school, the students of various schools that are where students have been kidnapped, those that are still being held in captivity. Let us pray for them. That in his own mysterious way, he who saved Daniel from the lion's den, that he will protect them, keep them safe and sane, and soon see them delivered to their families. We pray, O oh Lord. Our God is a God of mystery. Even in this midnight in our country, we know that with, with God's intervention, dawn will soon emerge. Let dawn emerge in our country. Let us begin to see the sunrise in our country. We pray, O oh Lord. May Almighty God hear our prayer. May he grant us his peace today and lead us to everlasting life. Amen.
cin meke kawo tashin hankali da harkitsi a tsakanin mu dukan mu Allah daya muke kakani guda mutane ana ta zub da jini ko yaushe saboda rashin fahimtar juna me ya kamata mi ya kamata mu dungumi zaman lafiya da kwanciya hankali a tsakanin mu mu fahimti juna ya kamata ni da kai da ke mu tashi mu yaki wannan jahilcin da ke a tsakanin mu mu hada karfe da karfi mu wanzar da zaman lafiya kai da ni da ke mu zama jakadu na wanzar da zaman lafiya a samu najeriya oh master grant that i may never see so much to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love with all my soul ibon mama no the boys no na ba to alo malo malo ona to alo feke o fe yin si no he o pani aka e je si no jo so agboku o amara no go bon o mun ne mun di kai wore kena no mati ga chino obo pana ba na adu nwa nzuzu odu ka nwa mu ife na amura ko aga adoro no ma mu nem uduka ba fa mmadu uduka alai na njiria choro kai nyen udu oyere ka oche ka chine ke mezi okwu omo nigeria eje ka gbe ninu ife eje ka feran arawa eje ka ni ire po ka le gbe ninu alaafia alaafia lo ye wa o ki lu ile tuba ko le tu se ki bubu wa si gbe ninu ayo ki olorun bu ko fun bubu wa o Make me a channel of your peace Where there is the spirit in life let me bring home Where there is darkness only light Where there is sadness ever joy for peace in Nigeria may the lord hear our prayer Amen. we pray for peace in other troubled parts of the world may the lord hear our prayer may he transform the terrible circumstances of today unto good in his own miraculous mysterious way amen 